All right, this is part two of the dividing head reassembly. And I've put some waste oil on the dovetails already. And it is time to put everything back together. A little bit more oil never hurts anything. I had put some oil in through the oil port at the top of the casing. And some of it did end up on the inside, as you can see over here. I used this port that's at the top. Next, I wanted to see where the oil would end up after injecting it to this oil port. And it was a little bit difficult, but with some pressure, the oil did actually come through into the grooves in the lashing ring in the back. You can see it coming out now. The back end of the spindle sits in this bearing, and the oil helps to lubricate its movement. Next, I just wanted to see how smoothly everything would come apart and go back together. The dovetails are a very nice snug fit. Uh, and with a little bit of wiggling motion and aiming it absolutely correctly, it does go back in uh, if you don't have greasy hands. And it moves very smoothly. I mean, just under its own weight, it falls right down without any difficulty. Okay, now it's time to add the clamping nuts. These are made out of brass and you can see where they uh, pre apply pressure to the dovetail just inside that hole. The shaft is threaded on both ends so this end goes into the brass clamping nut and with just one nut installed tightened with just light finger pressure it is already hard to move the dividing head. And now to install the front bearing seat this actually already has the outer race for the thrust bearing um, already installed in it. It was a pretty snug fit and I decided not to take it apart. And now just completing screwing in the three screws that hold it in place. And now you can see the outer race for the tapered bearing. And now for the assembly of the needle thrust bearing and uh, the split retaining nut. A little bit of lube. And here comes the split nut that threads in pretty easily. Next is the geared indexing pin. And the a rack does not seem to have any grease on it at all. It was very dry. And there are a couple of little areas of minor rust as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a nice liberal dab of grease on it. And uh, also on the pinion that drives the rack. All right, nice and smooth. And guess what? There's a tiny hole for oiling the head very mechanism. Next is the screw for adjusting the backlash between the uh, worm shaft and the worm gear itself. Now for the worm, it has a nylon washer that goes in like that, but it was giving me a lot of trouble when I was trying to reinstall the mounting bracket the washer is just a little bit too big and when you put the worm shaft into the mounting bracket it would catch just inside and there's such little clearance that the tiny amount of push from the nylon washer was keeping the whole thing from going in correctly so the way around it was to make sure that the nylon washer was fully in towards the worm and then the whole thing was able to go in without too much trouble and I don't know if you noticed this, but there was that ball bearing at the tip of the worm. Now the mounting bracket goes on in. <clears throat> it's a very snug fit. And as you know, it's eccentric. So really that uh, hole uh, and the slit have have to be kind of downish, and then it'll go in very easily. Basically, it's got to be in a disengaged position.
and this is the one and only screw that holds the engagement between the worm and the gear and interestingly enough the downloaded manual shows a second slot along that uh, side and a second screw as well but we have what we have and now to check for the preload in the bearings according to the manual the bearings should be tight enough that when the spindle nose is raised there is no deflection and right now you can see the spindle is quite loose so I'm going to tighten things up with the spanner nut in the back the idea is to have enough preload in the bearings that pushing up on the spindle nose leads to no deflection so now I'm going to push up and there's minimal deflection if anything of course if you put in too much preload then there'll be premature wear of the bearings now we're going to set the backlash between the worm and the worm gear the backlash is set by rotating the holder in a clockwise and anticlockwise manner when it's fully anticlockwise like right now the worm is free of the worm gear and the worm shaft can be rotated freely and that allows for you know the quick indexing plate to move now as you rotate the holder clockwise the engagement becomes progressively uh, more significant and uh, the worm fully engages but if you go too far then it almost becomes crunchy it becomes a bit too tight so now it's a matter of playing with the engagement until it feels right I can see the spindle moving from my point of view and I'm just adjusting it until it feels like we've got good engagement and smooth movement but here's an interesting thing that now happens now if you'll observe the gap between the housing and the side you'll see that it disappears as I tighten up that screw and that actually affects the engagement between the worm shaft and the worm gear of course I also decided to take the worm out and look at it and <laughs> unfortunately the ball bearing at its end had also fallen out so I fished it out from inside the case put the ball bearing back on re so now having put everything back together I decided to put this handle on as well just to show how easy it is once the backlash has been adjusted really very easy to turn the handle back and forth and there's absolutely no grittiness or difficulty at all okay so having set everything up absolutely right I'm going to go ahead and start the process all over again so the first step is as always to go ahead and remove uh, rather to loosen up the screw holding the housing in place and to rotate the housing anti-clockwise this disengages the worm from the wheel from the gear and now to turn it clockwise ever so slightly and then keep going until you can feel the worm and the worm gear engage and then I will go ahead and tighten up the screw that holds the housing in place and I will make it as tight as I am going to set it at because that affects the backlash and now one screwdriver is on the other side I have loosened up the set screw in the front of the housing which holds the backlash screw from moving and now I will go ahead and gradually loosen or tighten that backlash screw until I have good movement and there's not a lot of pressure coming towards me okay now this is a bit of a jerry-rigged setup I have put a protractor on a welding magnet and the protractor is in line with the axis of the handle um, for turning the worm and you can see this little sharp remark that I've made uh, as I move the handle you should be able to see very slight movement along the sharp remark now I'm going to bring the handle to a close to vertical position and then I will gently push it back in the clockwise direction and by eyeballing I'll try to estimate how much angular change at the worm shaft is required to make the spindle start to rotate okay now I'm going to go ahead and move the handle ever so slightly until I can just feel 
the worm engage and try to get some kind of a measurement from my setup and I measure about six degrees so that measures out to six degrees which translates to 0 0.15 degree at the spindle because it's a 40 to 1 rotation uh, advantage and that's like nine arc minutes now it's certainly possible to make it tighter than that but I think this for me is a fair compromise and here's a closer look at how I set it all up now this is a view from the other side showing a hole for the set screw and the actual backlash screw and part three will be about alignment including a quick and dirty way which works and I think you will like thank you for watching